All right, so the first one was Great League. Now we're into Ultra League. I'll also be doing Ultra Premiere, but Charizard, I'm going to release the Ultra League one first because Charizard actually has some pretty interesting use in regular uh, open Ultra League. So with Legendaries, not Premier Cup where you take out Legendaries, but I think Charizard can have use in Ultra Premiere, and we're going to take a look at Ultra Premiere. For this video, we're going to look at Ultra open so open ultra league you got legendaries you got mythicals you got the whole shebang so in charizard far flying of course if you're watching this video you probably know who charizard is if you don't you should probably go back to play red and blue anyways charizard has really high attack decent defense and stamina so it's a pretty balanced pokemon and it maxed out 2089 so it maxes out at near 2500 which makes it really good now for a regular open ultra league you're pro there's a li there's a lot of things you have to watch out for for open ultra for your electric types for open ultra definitely probably melmetal which isn't even like a pure electric type but you got you got melmetal melmetal with thunder actually melmetal just actually wrecks your world because of the electric because of electric typing so you got that. You got like Magna Zones. I don't think I've seen too many Magna Zones. You got Zapdoses if you see a random Zapdos. But you do see some Thunder. You you will see some Thunder or Electric in Open Ultra. Mainly from Melmetal's Thunder Shocks. Because the second thing that comes out here where Charizard just absolutely gets destroyed. And definitely the move you should, the type you should watch out for the most is Rock Slide. Rock Slide, anything that drops rocks on you. You need to get out of here because Charizard just can't take it. Charizard, nine times out of ten, if a Melmetal does hit it with Rock Slide, it's going to die if you have no shields. So we're going to take a look at that and you'll see just how rocks just absolutely rock your world. And those Ancient Powers from Togekiss actually hurt a lot in Open Ultra. Now water, of course, you have Empoleons and you also have the ever popular meta af swampert swampert absolutely wrecks your world now the interesting is one hydro cannon from a swamp regular swampert doesn't kill but a shadow swampert's hydro cannon does kill in any in any case waterfall from hot empoleon like anything water hurts charizard like i said high attack somewhat decent defense and stamina means that it's gonna hurt a lot so you want to avoid these three but even those are those even though those types run around a lot in open ultra, you have those obstacles, you have those pseudo counters, you resist a lot of things. That's what makes Char makes Charizard really good. You resist the Mega Horns from Excavalier. You miss though you you wall those leaf blades from Shiftry. I do see a few Shiftries in open ultra. Not too common, but they're out there. You also resist those charms from the ever popular Togekiss, like I said. You also resist those counter users like Machamp. And you also resist the pseudo counter users, most popularly Excavalier and Obstagoon. You also resist Shallow Tire types. So if you get the mirror and you see Fire Spin Charizard, then you actually resist those Fire Spins. You also resist Ground types, so Drill Runs from Excavalier again. And I don't think there's a lot of other ground moves that I remember. Probably that and the Earthquake from Swampert. You resist those two. But I don't think a Swampert's going to Earthquake you. They're probably just going to Hydro Cannon you to death. Unless they don't have... They don't have... Unless they don't have Hydro Cannon. Which, if you don't have Hydro Cannon, you probably shouldn't be using Swampert. And Ready Seal's Flash Cannon. So Charizard is really good in Open Ultra for... Especially the Dragon Breath version. Because it flips a lot of interesting matchups. Now, the thing about Charizard... If you're reading this, it's because you're a community today and you're really interested. Is Charizard good for Open Ultra? So I'm not going to worry about the whole like costing cheap to power up as far as second move. It's also not that bad to like max. Well, actually, it does max out pretty high. So it's kind of cheap, but it's triple dust for Charizard community day. So you're thinking about powering up for Open Ultra League. You're at the right place. And it also has a really sweet shiny. Actually, all forms of a shiny are just absolutely like amazing. And it has a lot of use for Open Ultra League. As you see here, very powerful, very sweet, and I said a lot of use.
All right, so for the people poke rankings, open Ultra Charizard is actually pretty beastly. It ranks at number 56, which actually, it, which isn't that bad. And the Shadow version is actually in the top 100 as well. Now, what really shines is Mega Charizard X. We're gonna, I'm gonna go over separate videos for each of these because Mega Charizard X, the reason why it rates uh, higher than regular Charizard is because you get that stab bonus from it being a Dragon Fire type because it does become a Dragon type when you Mega Evolve it. A regular Charizard still ranks very high, like I said, has some very interesting matchups. You win, you actually beat Cresselia and Togekiss in the one shield with Dragon Breath Charizard. Now you're gonna see just how crazy it is, or like how crazy like Dragon Breath Charizard actually like does it. We'll see it in the Matrix, but it also flips some other interesting matchups, and you'll see shortly. So here's the matrix. We've got Charizard. I put regular Charizard here with both Blast Burn and Ovary. And I also put the Shadow version here as well. I put Blast Burn in here because if you're willing to spend that Elite TM, you can. And it, we'll see exactly if you need Blast Burn or not. But from my Great League analysis, I've seen that uh, Overheat Charizard has actually flipped some matchups. So let's see if Overheat or Blast Burn do anything. So here's the two shield. You beat up Bomb Snow with regular Charizard. I'm guessing the reason why you lose with Shadow is because you're not, you lose that bulk. You also beat Articuno with the Blast Burn version. I'm not sure if this is bait, de I'm pretty sure this is really bait dependent. Or actually you, yeah, you can you just go, okay, so it looks like you have to, yeah. Can you just go straight Dragon Claw? So you ha you Blast Burn at the end. You bait both shields with Dragon Claw and the Blast Burn. Can you get it with just straight? Oh no, you have. So you have to land the Blast Burn to take out Articuno. So keep that in mind. This is bait dependent. But still being able to flip Articuno 2s. If your opponent does end up shielding both of your Dragon Claws, you still will just burn it to death. So that's Articuno in a nutshell. You also beat the... So you'll beat the Mirror. If you get the Fire Spin Zard, like I mentioned, you'll actually beat that. And then you'll go, you'll sign this KO with the regular Charizard. Or not regular, but Dragon Breath Zard. So if you mirror with the Dragon Breath version, you're, it, of course, it's a simultaneous knockout. Unless you're ahead of energy or damage or etc. Now the interesting is you actually beat Clefable in the two shield. So the two shield, you actually beat the Charmer. Because even though Dragon Breath does resist you, you could just go, you, well, let's see. You have to land the Blast Burn. Can you win without Blast Burn? You cannot. So both Articuno and Clefable are bait dependent. So you have to be able to bait both shields before you hit with Blast Burn or it doesn't KO. And I'm guessing the Shadow version loses just because like it loses its bulk. So Shadow Ultra Open Ultra League Charizard doesn't look to be very... Like it, it, it doesn't look to be very promising versus the regular version. Because you do need that bulk. Now it does flip an interesting matchup. In the two shield you do beat Cresselia with the Dragon Breath Shadow version. So you do beat the Dragon Breath. You do beat it with Dragon Breath with the Shadow. You beat Dragonites. This is probably pretty crazy because in open in open Ultra, I've seen a few Dragonites. You'll see them mostly during Premiere, but you do beat them just going straight Dragon Claw, as you see here. You, it's 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 insane, and that's because of Charizard's attack. Like I said, it has a high attack set. You beat Excavalier. You beat Ferrothorn. Now you're gonna lose against Galate. I don't see a lot of Galates in open Ultra League, so don't worry about it too much. You do see a lot of Excavaliers, and ironically, I don't think this is does it. You bait boat shields with Dragon Claw, and then you blast burn it to death. Can you go straight Dragon Claw? Can you win with just straight Dragon Claw? Yes. So you could actually win just straight Dragon Claw. You almost die. However, you still do beat Excavalier. I'm guessing Megahorn, you don't Megahorn because it doubles just Megahorn, so, but you do beat Excavalier if you just go straight Dragon Claw. So that's really nuts because you actually, there, you do see a lot of Excavalier. You also see a lot of Giratina Alters. This is the big one. Charizard beating Gira A is huge because Giratina Altered is just a monster and it actually, Charizard actually beats it straight Dragon Claw on a two shield. So leading a Charizard might not be a bad idea. Now you do be, you also beat, let's see, you beat Giratina Origins as well, just because Dragon Breath does so much damage. You'll also beat Gira O, which is also prominent lead. You'll also beat Machamp. So, well, that's a Shadow Champ. You lose against the regular one, I'm guessing, just because it can land the Rock Side. 
If you do call the cross chops, I think you can flip this matchup. So if your opponent does go straight cross chop, or if you call the shields for the cross chop, I think you do beat it. You do. So as long as you double shield, as long as you double shield, or you could shield the rock slide, you're you're pretty good to go against regular mod champs. So you actually flip this one. You also be armored Mewtwo. Armored Mewtwo is a popular one. Maybe not so much in the lead, but you do see it. You do see it. You can see it in open ultra and you can see alolan muck as well so it looks like you beat alolan muck but let's see if you have to bait in order to win no you could just go straight dragon claw so for muck you could just go straight dragon claw you know you also be polyrath you be polyrath and of course you beat reggie steel because reggie steel you both resist flash cannon and focus blast so you do beat reggie steel you also beat snorlax in open ultra that's huge that's really huge, actually. Especially even Polyrath. You beat Poly. You can you beat it, bitch? Let's see. You beat it by landing the Blast Burn, and you can still beat it going straight Dragon Claw. Dragon Bird Charizard is a force to be reckoned with with two shields, and you also beat Togekiss. Now you probably have to shield both Ancient Powers and you have to land a Blast Burn, but you can beat Togekiss as you see right here. You have to be able to bait both shields and then you blast burn. You can't go straight Dragon Claw. Because if you do go straight Dragon Claw, then you probably will die. Because you, as you see, Ancient Power still does chunk. And Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw are all resisted. So you have to land that blast burn on Togekiss. However, that's still pretty huge. Being able to flip the Gira matchup is what makes Dragon Breath Charizard so good. You be you flip the Dragon Breath, the Giratina matchup. You also, it's, yeah, in the two shield, you beat Gira. Which is still, but that's huge. You also be Excavalier, and you can be Togekiss, and you can be Char and Clefable, as long as you can land that Blast Burn. So remember, you have to land a Blast Burn in order to flip the Charmer matchup. But as you see, very strong, very powerful. You don't beat Obstagoon, unfortunately, but you do beat Machamp. Well, Machamp, you have to bait, and then Obstagoon, you, unfortunately, Obstagoon just does so much damage with Night Slash because it gets that stab. So that's two shield. Let's take a look at the one shield. So that was the two shield. As you saw in the rankings, Charizard's best used in the lead. So two shields, it's no surprise it beats so much in the two shield. How about the one shield? So this is the one shield scenario with Charizard. In the one shield, you'll lose against Bama now, but that's all right. You actually still beat Articuno, so I think you do bait with Dragon Claw, however, and then you go to Blast Burn. You still beat Fire Spin Charizard, but you lose against, well, you don't lose against Dragon Breath one, but you'll simultaneously kill each other. You also be Clefable, but I think with the Charmers, like last time, it is bait dependent. So you have to be able to bait. And then you Blast Burn. I don't think you could go straight Blast Burn and still take the W. Because I think those Charms just hurt too much. Actually, you still could, you could just go straight Blast Burn. No, it's a lie. You, I'm wrong. You could go straight Blast Burn against Clefable in the one shield and still beat it. Can you do the same against Togekiss? Because they're both Charmers, so we might as well skip to Togekiss and see if we can do the same thing. So, against the... Most prominent charmers. Let's see. Can you just go straight blast burn? Okay, you can. So against the charmers, you can bait with dragon claw, but you actually, as long as you have a shield, you could just go straight blast burn, as you see here. So straight blast burn actually takes out Togekiss. Now I don't think you can do that with overheat. I think with overheat, you yeah, with overheat, I think you have to be able to land the overheat, or you have to bait with dragon claw, because because overheat debuffs your attack yeah so uh, overheat you have to bait with dragon claw to flip this matchup otherwise you could just go straight blast burn against the charmers which is really which is nuts in the one shield in the one shield you could go straight blast burn you still beat excavalier you beat ferrothor you beat galade you even beat shadow dragonite because like i said those dragon bits are charmed and you also beat chrysalia i don't i don't know do you have to bait that's what kind of sucks like you like you're Cresselius don't like taking Blast Burn, of course. However, you in some scenarios, you do need Bait with Dragon Claw in order to win. And Cresselia does win, so you do need to get... Like, the Cresselia will barely live if you go if you go straight Blast Burn. However, this is the one shield, so you'll barely win, but you have to Bait with Dragon Claw in order to flip the Cresselia matchup. So it's very specific for Cresselia. You beat Dragon Eye, you beat Excavalier, you beat... A Galate. Now, you beat the Dragon Breath Giratina version, but you don't beat the Shadow Claw version. I'm guessing it's because the Shadow Claw just generates so much energy. Yeah. Like, you'll barely lose a 4% HP, so you'll barely lose, but if you have energy, like here, you could actually take two Dragon Claws from Giratina A, 
but you have to do a little bit of damage to flip this matchup. So in order to beat this one, you need a little bit of damage gear altered. Now, if it's a Dragon Breath version, you do beat it because I'm guessing that your Dragon Breaths do... If you take a look, your damage ratio versus gear altered is bigger. That's why you just beat it going straight Dragon Claw. So you'll beat the Dragon Claw. That's a good thing to know. You'll beat the Dragon Breath variant, but you won't beat the Shadow Claw variant. So just keep that in mind. Because if you do Shadow Claw, you might want to switch out. Because you're going to lose that unless you want to farm that little bit of HP that's left. You beat Gear A, you also beat Gramble. So you'll beat Charm Gramble. You'll beat Gear Regina Origins. And let's see, you lose against Shadow Champ and regular Mod Champ. You also lose against Lapras. And remember, let's talk about Melmetal. Melmetal just rocks your world. Should just be very careful. With Armored Mew 2, you do lose. However, you do lose with a 490 rating. However, okay, so you do lose because Psy Strike just does so much damage. I'm guessing the reason why you do beat it with the Shadow version is because your Shadow Dragon Breath's chunk and you can land Overheat. So, it. The Shadow version actually flips the Armor Mew 2 matchup, and it also flips the Shadow Champ matchup. So, Shadow Charizard in Ultra League does have play. It does have play. You beat Obstagoon in the One Shield this time around. I think this is bait dependent, though. I think you have to bait with Dragon Claw and then land that Blast Burn. I'm not sure if you could go, because counter charges so quickly. Yeah, you do need, so you need to bait... Same thing with Cresselia. In order to beat the Cresselia matchup, you do need to bait with that. You need a bait. So you need to be able to bait with Dragon Claw in order to blast from or this matchup gets flipped. I'm not sure about the Shadow version. I think with the Shadow version, you can go straight Dragon Claw. No, you have to land a Blast Burn as well. If you go straight Blast Burn, I think you lose too, because, especially since Shadow Charizard Char are so squishly. Yep. So you do win, you have to bait with Obstagoon. So as you see here, it's a little tricky to play Charizard just because some matches are bait dependent. Now, for Scizor, I think you can win. You, I think you have to land the Blast Burn too. You can't just go straight Blast Burn to win in the ones. I think you can actually because you resist Bullet Punch. Nope, so Scizor wins. It wins going straight night slash so you do need a bait with scissor as well as you see you do flip a lot of positive matchups but some of these are really bait dependent so as you see you flip the toxic crook matchup but like depending on your ivs it can matter that's why an attack weight one kind of matters because you can actually flip the toxic crook matchup in some scenarios for ex well we'll go over the we'll go over the attack weight one like later i'll do a more specific video but generally in the high rank ones some of these matches once you go past the one shield it's definitely bait dependent but some matchups like with the charmers you could go straight blast burn and you still take the w now in the zeros it gets interesting you beat you beat arcuna you beat bama you beat charizard of course if you don't have the dragon breath if you don't face the mirror you lose against Clefable because I think Clefable can just charm you down at this point. But Shadow Charizard... Wait, hold on. Why does Shadow Charizard win? I'm guessing because you land the Blast Burn. Okay, straight Blast Burn kills. Now, why does the regular one lose? I'm guessing you lose just because of the... You don't get that extra damage with Blast Burn. Yeah, so you'll lose just because of that extra damage with Blast Burn. And then it, they could just Psychic you to death. Now, you they live with 1 HP. So one turn can literally flip this matchup. So just be careful in the zeros versus a Clefable. You, if it's a shadow, you beat it. If it's not a shadow, you're trending water because you have to do a little bit of damage on Clefable. Not a bad matchup though. You beat Dripblim, you also beat Draconite. You beat Excavalier, Ferrothorn. Now in the zeros, you'll both, you'll beat both versions of Gear A with the regular version, but you beat, you lose with the Shadow, for the Shadow Claw. I'm guessing just because, like I said, Shadow Claw Charizard does loot 20% of its defense, so it does matter if you have a Shadow or regular version. Now, the regular version beats it in the twos and in the zero, it, the twos and the zeros very convincingly, so Charizard is just a monster. So, in the closing scenario, you also beat Registeel, of course, Scizor, so you beat all the steals. You'll beat Obstagoon in the zeros now. You'll also beat Amok. And you lose against. Remember, I was talking about like keep away from water. Don't make don't make Charizard keep away Charizard from wetness or it dies. Yeah, because it dies really hard against Swamper. You'll also lose against Melmetal still, and against Machamp. So just be careful. You beat Toxicroak at this point in the zeros. You also beat Venusaur. Now you lose against Togekiss, but Togekiss and Snorlax. However, I think with Togekiss, no, you you have to. So it's like it's like the. It's pretty much like the Clefable scenario. You have to. It has. If you do a little bit of chip damage on Togekiss, you can flip that matchup. 
But even then, unless you have that, you will lose against Togekiss or fellow Charmer, or like most Charmers in the Zero Shield. Now, I'm not going to go too deep in the one and the two shield advantage because anything with Dragon Breath, yeah. If you look right here, you beat everything but Empoleon and Lapras with the regular version. So, Empoleon, you barely lose. So, anything with Dragon Breath is just really oppressive. And you lose just because against Lapras up a shield just because if you look, those ice parts plus the surf damage does kill you. As you see here, you'll bait with one, or you have to shield both, or you die. It's, yeah, you have to shield both, or you die. So, that's just Lapras. Or it's just because of Lapras' speed, especially Dragon Breath. But other than that, you beat most of everything else. Now, the Shadow version doesn't beat Swampert, ironically, up a shield, just because it does so much, it takes too much damage. As you see here, one, two Hydro Cans, you block one, it yeets. One, the reason why regular Charizard lives is because you actually can live Hydro Cannon. So, you'll live one Hydro Cannon. And then you can get to the Dragon Claw. But up a shield, Dragon Breath Charizard, like I said, beats everything but Empoleon or Lapras with the regular version. And it beats everything else. So as long as you are up a shield. Now two shields, you beat everything. Except La except Empoleon. Because Empoleon, what Empoleon does, it just waterfalls you down. But you do beat it with the Overheat and with the Dragon dra and the Shadow version. So Shadow version, the, old, the regular version just doesn't beat it because you get waterfall down. So remember, up one shield, you'll lose against Lapras and Empoleon. Up two shields, you only lose against Empoleon. Well, that's what they're at, and that's pretty much it. In the two to ones, it's a different story because you're even though you have shield advantage, you do flip some. For example, you'll still you'll lose against Obama Snow Shadow. You'll lose against Shadow Obama, and you lose against Empoleon regardless. So Empoleon just wrecks your soul. Other than that, in the two to ones, you do beat everything else except in some scenarios. Like I said, Shadow Obama for the most part. But as you see, the two to ones are like really specific. Like Shadow Charizard loses against regular Bomba Snow, but it and but it and it loses against Swampert. So Shadow, like I said, Shadow regular version does flip. And that's Charizard. That's just Shadow. That's just Charizard in a nutshell for like the shield advantage scenario. Like I said, you beat most scenarios up a shield just because Dragon Breath is just so good. Alright, so in summary, I'd say a 7 out of 10. The reason being is because even though Dragon Breath Charizard's really good, some of its matchups do are kind of bait dependent. For example, like Togekiss, etc. And it's very specific. Even though Dragon Breath is really good, it's kind of tricky to play. But with Charizard, if you give Charizard shield advantage, it does do really well just because Dragon Breath is so oppressive. Dragon Breath Charizard's best used in the lead for Open Ultra League, and it does flip some interesting matchups. You can beat Giratina Altered, you also can beat Cresselia in the ones. It can also beat Togekiss, and it also beats Excalibur. It beats a whole bunch of, like, meta typing, so it's very relevant in this meta. But the reason I'm giving it 7 out of 10 is because, even though it's, like I said... Even though you're, it's easy to obtain everything like that, it's tricky to play. And along with that, Blast Burn, you do need to use an Elite TM. That's why I ranked it even lower. At number 56, having to use an Elite TM, and it's kind of tricky to play. It's not very user-friendly. Charizard's kind of like, it's like I said, it's not very user-friendly. It's hard to play. That's why it doesn't have a higher rating. If it didn't have these issues, like if you could regulate, like if Blast Bird, if you could like, evolve it and have both i would give it a higher rating but just that and the fact that it's not particularly game breaking and but it does beat a lot of the meta but like i said tricky to play and it is a little it is somewhat it, it's not super squishy but you have to be like careful especially if you're down shield so where charizard with dragon breath really shines is being up shield so you could kind of like if i had to put charizard in a team as you see, Charizard is best used in the lead. Very strong as a lead. So as a lead, Charizard rank Dragon Breath Charizard actually ranks at number 37. Beating things like Cresselia, Togekiss, Excavalier, Obstagoon, Articuno in the two shield. So you all you actually beat Gear A and other things in the two shield, but like I said, it's tricky to play. That's why it's given the rating it is. Anyways, good luck on your guys. I hope you guys got some really sweet Charizards for PvP, especially for Ultra League. And I hope this guide helped you guys out a lot. Good luck on your triple stardust, and I hope you guys had, like I said, I hope you had some great Charmanders. Make sure you practice, because like I said, Dragon Breath Charizard is really tricky, and I'll see you in the next video. You guys have a wonderful day.